Commuting is seen by most of us as a chore. Business travel, whether national or international, is little different. And whether you travel by plane, train or automobile, the journey can be time-consuming and often expensive. But video conferencing was supposed to allow us to do away with business travel. Why fly halfway around the world when you can have a face-to-face -face meeting from the comfort of your own home or office? Well, some say that there's simply no replacement for actually being there. If we look at the field of kinesics, the opportunity to be able to read body language, the opportunity to shake people's hand, I don't think we'll ever truly replace physical interaction and physical relationships. But the video conferencing market is continually evolving. Microsoft has recently acquired Skype, which will be integrated into its link solution. Google Hangouts allows multiple simultaneous video sessions for free. And at the higher end of the market, there are still full video conferencing and telepresence solutions for those wanting the next best thing to being there. So how do these different solutions compare, and what are their benefits? At the top end of the market is the full telepresence suite. According to the hype, it's as good as actually being there. So I'm here at EMC with Adam Cooney, Lynn McKay and Patrick Cooley. Now, from where I'm sitting, it seems that the three of you are literally in this room with me, with this bench sort of extended out into the screens I can see in front of me here. And behind you, I can see the chairs and the walls being the same colour as the room I'm in and the same colour as each other. But I know we're all in different locations, but I'm guessing this isn't a coincidence. This is a, a deliberately deliberate strategy by EMC to sort of further the immersion. Is, is, is that right, Lynn? But oh, we've done a lot of work so that we have room standards for each of the rooms and we specify the room color and the chairs are going to be ordered just to enhance that feeling of being all in the same room. So do many people across EMC use this sort of telepresence suite? A lot of people do, especially at our larger sites here in Massachusetts campus and corporate two examples of that. Definitely very heavily used by the executives, but I think as more and more people learn to use it, they're using it for a lot of other cases. One of the big things is to get people in there because some people tend to think it is for executives at customer meetings and we want it to be for everybody. But can telepresence ever really truly replace face-to-face -face contact? I mean, I can, I can see the nuances in your faces here as we're talking and I, I can see your body language, but is, is it the same? That's not to say, when you, when you have a business meeting, there's also other elements to it. It's the off, uh, the side conversations, etc. It isn't a, a, as good for that. For example, you cannot go out and have a beer with somebody. But once you build up a relationship, it is extremely useful to be able to come in and, and to talk to people. So there is still, an, there's still a need for travel and for initially getting to know people. But this is just so much better for actually developing those relationships. But these suites require substantial investment. They take time to implement, often take up an entire room, and involve ongoing support and training costs. Offering similar functionality, but at a lower cost, is your classic video conferencing solution. It may not claim to put you in the room, but it does put less pressure on your space and on your CFO. So how does this video conferencing system work? So it runs across um, either a dedicated wide area network, uh, an IP network, or it can run across your MPLS network as well. Um, but we Intrude provides the whole service to our customers. Why use this sort of system and not a full telepresence suite? And it's really a question of the type of meeting you're having. If you're having a, a big, uh, if you're having a, a high level executive meeting where it's very, very important to be able to share material, to um, exchange and communicate on a very, very personal level, then the telepresence suites are fantastic for that. If you're having a regular team meeting with your team, um, dispersed team, either UK or nationally, internationally, then a room-based system or even a desktop system is useful. Um, but the key is to have them in high definition. If you can have high quality, that's the key to great video because then you can see the facial expressions, you can actually see all of the extra communication cues and tips that you wouldn't get over an audio call. Would you say this is a complete replacement for business travel? No, I, I, don't, think it's a, I don't think it's a complete replacement for business travel. Uh, business travel is still important. Um, and a company like Interroot, we're a, a big pan-European organisation. Uh, it, it's very important to go and meet people in other organisations, to move out to the regional teams, to go and see people face to face and shake hands. But what you don't need to do is do that all the time. Uh, yeah, it does mean you get fewer emails, but again, you get more time at home <laughs> and more time with the kids, which is a, a big bonus. But how does the quality compare to telepresence? I spoke to Tord Arbin at ICA to find out. 
So, Todd, how often do you use this sort of video conferencing system for your business needs? Yeah, we use video conferencing a lot when we have contacts with other office in Sweden, Norway, Baltic states, Hong Kong, and with suppliers to the ICA. But much as it has affected other industries, the cloud has changed this market too. You've heard of software as a service, well, now there's video as a service, or VAS. Why invest in an expensive solution that you're paying for whatever its usage, when you can use the cloud and pay as you go? VAS provider Logicalis is hoping this is precisely the question many companies will ask. So what is video as a service? Well, the good thing about video as a service is it's just video. Um, uh, the, the as a service piece is around the consumption model. So all of the systems that you'd expect to have in a normal video estate from room systems through to desktop is video as a service. It's just the customer can now buy it and pay per month and consume it rather than have to buy and build and run it themselves. But why would someone use video as a service rather than, say, standard video conferencing or telepresence? Two real reasons. One is speed of, of delivery um, and secondly is skills and the way that they pay for it. Um, so a, an organisation looking to exploit video quickly may choose video as a service because they can start up immediately, no capital costs and pay per month as they, as they consume the service. Do you think this could ever completely replace business travel? Um, I was in the States last week so I travelled, um, but I videoed back um, from my hotel room to do a number of meetings. Um, I work in Slough. Um, I now try not to come into London for meetings because I can dial into meeting rooms here from my desk and have multi-way video calls uh, but with customers. We, I negotiated a contract with a customer over video a couple of weeks ago. Um, you know, that's the real power of this now is the ability to either mitigate travel or do meetings you wouldn't be able to do because you're trying to slot in a 15 minute meeting in London when you're, when you're someone else. You can now do it with video as a service. And you can go even further down the price chain to services such as Skype, Google Hangouts and even Facebook. Of course you'll have no SLA, the quality may be variable and there are no guarantees that it's secure. But are these facts acceptable given that you're paying, well, nothing? The, the issue with putting Skype into the corporate um, environment is more one of standardization of security, of fitting in with the existing systems. So if you can get all of your video conferencing units operating on the same standard, then the interoperability between them is much, much better and you get a much more seamless experience, whether you're, video, you're dialing in from a, a PC, a desktop or from a room based. So we've taken a look at some of the different benefits offered by fully featured yet expensive telepresence, the middle ground offered by video conferencing and the cheap but more flexible video as a service solutions. Whilst most agree that no one solution can fully replace face-to-face -face contact, it can provide a convenient and cost-effective alternative.